Hi YouTube, I'm Patrick. I live in a tiny house and today I'm going to show you how we make our pizza and our, our grill or the barbecue because we don't have an oven in our tiny house. We don't even have a microwave, but you can still make great pizzas, restaurant quality at home in your tiny house. If you just bring it in and start eating it the way it was, eh, that's a pizza. But this is a great pizza. But before we get into it, Please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and like or dislike this video. All right, let's do it. So we live in a tiny house and we really enjoy making pizza from scratch. And this is the easiest um, recipe that we use to cook on the barbecue. And it's actually a non-bread recipe, super fluffy and super flavorful. So the first step is proofing your yeast. And you wanna start with a half a cup or 125 mils of warm water, not hot, just warm and just put your yeast in. So that was six grams of just instant dry yeast, or you can use active dry yeast. And then I just usually sprinkle a little bit of sugar in there just to get the yeast hungry and going. Okay, so we're just gonna let this sit for 10 minutes, let it get nice and foamy. And while we do that, we're gonna make the sauce. All right, so for the sauce, um, grab a whole peeled tomatoes can. Pour it straight into your blender, or um, we use the uh, magic bullet, that works really good. And then we're going to put a little bit of fresh minced garlic, whatever you want to call it. Let's put a good spoonful. Okay, Italian herb seasoning, put a generous amount of that in. Olive oil. I don't know, a good tablespoon. And my secret ingredient is some good barbecue sauce. Whatever you prefer, really. I usually do like a couple tablespoons, maybe. And this gives it some real good flavor when you cook it down. And I'm just going to use the rest. <laughs> Is you want, oh wait, I'll uh, put a little salt and pepper in as well. Okay. okay. I'm just gonna blend that up. And that's it. You don't want to go crazy. All right. Now we're gonna um. Put that into a saucepan and cook it down for a little bit. So put your pan on high heat on small burner. Pour your sauce in. And we're just gonna let that, bring it to a simmer. It'll start to thicken up a little and start to lose its moisture from the tomatoes. So once it starts bubbling like that, you can turn it down to low. Um, and then you just want to let it bubble away for, um, you know, 10 or 15 more minutes and just let it get real thickened up, maybe 20 minutes. So it's starting to thicken up. It's almost done, I'd say. It's, it looks a bit thin here at the moment, but it's just because it's warm. So we'll give that another five minutes and we'll shut it off. All right, so I'm just going to give it a taste and make sure we're on track here. Tastes pretty good, but... I usually put a little sugar in too, just to, a little more. Give it a little sweetness. Stir that in. All right, and now we're just going to um, remove it from the heat, and we're going to let it cool completely. All right, guys. So now that we've got the sauce bubbling away over here, we're going to uh, make the dough. So. In the cup here, we have the uh, yeast, which is nice and foamy and activated really well. If your yeast hasn't done this, it means it's killed and it will not work. Um, so you'll need to retry. So multiple things, the water could have been too hot. The yeast could be expired. So we're just going to pour that in. And then we have a quarter cup of milk here. We're also going to pour in. Okay. And we're just going to take a fork and mix that up. Get that well incorporated. I always put 
put a bit of salt in as well. Okay, and then once you get it manageable, you get your hands in there and knead it. Okay, and then I always keep a little bowl of flour here because sometimes it's a bit too sticky. Depends. But you just want to get in there. Need that. When it all starts to come together, just get the sides down. So it's 200 grams of flour. Uh, sorry, I probably left that out. But we will have the um, ingredients in the, in the comments or somewhere like that. <laughs> it's called the description, Patrick. The description. All right, so now that we can manage it, right side, we're just gonna knead that, fold it over a few times on itself. We don't need to go crazy. This is actually a no knead recipe. It does come out better if you need it. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. Okay. I'm gonna grab a bowl, a stainless steel bowl. I'm gonna just spray it. That's just some canola oil spray. And cover it up. We have these nice little covers, the shower cap cover. <laughs> Put your dough in. And we're gonna let that rest for 30 minutes or you can let it rest longer or you could even put it in the fridge for a few days um, right directly now and actually it comes out a lot better if you have the time. Now I'm just gonna keep it in a warm place. So checking on the pizza dough, it's definitely risen. It's almost doubled in size I'd say, but it's looking good. So I've just pulled out my cheese and realized that uh, don't have enough, so I'm gonna go down to the local store there and get some more. back and our dough is definitely doubled in size. Take the top off carefully. I should have used a bigger bowl because this is what happens. <laughs> okay, get rid of that. And then uh, flour your work surface. Whoa. <laughs> Almost uh, man overboard there. And we'll just Push that around the edges, scoop it out. Okay, it is still a little wet. So I'm gonna uh, flour pretty good. Then I'm just gonna just start pushing it flat. All right. Okay. Flatten it out, make sure it's nice and even. All right. I'm going to flip it, All right? Now I'm actually going to flour that as well. Okay. Right. This is where it can get a bit messy, especially if you're in a tiny house, but you just got to deal with it. So I'm just going to slowly start kind of working the dough around, trying to keep, do my best to keep it uh, contained on the table here. It's not working. I'm looking at the cat. <laughs> okay. So now that we've kind of got that shape right to the size we want, it's a little bit deformed there, so just push it together. It's okay. It's okay. It all goes down the same way, guys. All right. All right. So we have this nice pizza pan here, uh, and it's got the holes in it, and uh, that just allows for even cooking on the bottom, so the center isn't getting soggy 
And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to spray that thing real good around the edges like that. Okay, you can see I'm spraying the counter and everything along with it. Okay, and then I'll put it there. So this is where it gets a bit tricky, but um, what you do is to transfer it onto the pan, take it, fold it over on itself, carry it over folded, place it on your pan like that, okay? And then all you gotta do is peel back one layer like that, and just reposition it nicely, okay? Okay. A little it's a little big for the pan what I've done but what I'm gonna do is kind of just kind of push push kind of push it around a little bit even it out flatten out the edges all right it's just like that is what you're looking for okay pretty pretty simple all right so We've got a nice sauce here. It's cooled down and it's thickened a lot and it's delicious. I could probably drink this stuff. Right. Be generous, don't. Nobody likes a doughy, non saucy pizza. Okay. When you see people dipping their pizza in extra sauce, you've done something horrible. <laughs> All right. Get that spread on there nice. Go right to the edges. more on. Probably don't need to use it all. Alright, let's spread that on nice. Alright, all right. we got our sauce on. Now what we're going to do is I prefer the uh, pepperonis on top, but these are the pepperonis we got. It's more like a salami, but I'll um, put some cheese on. But this is the bag of frozen cheese that I had. We'll see if it's enough. No, it's not gonna be nowhere near enough. Glad we went and got more. Mm. Mm. All right, I think we're, I think we're there with the cheese. Okay, put some pepperoni on there. Okay. So. I like full coverage. Nothing like a stingy pepperoni pizza, if you ask me. So mm -hmm. in, in the U.S., I used to work at Papa John's Pizza, and I uh, was a delivery driver for a few years. And then um, it was good money, honestly. Sometimes I'd bring home $100 a night and just some tips. But then uh, they asked me to become the manager, um, and yeah, both me and my brother actually worked at uh, Papa John's Pizza, different branches, and uh, yeah, we used to make pizzas all the time, and we used to love it. So this is why I love making pizza, because I was just grew up doing it. Hmm. Okay, pizza's good to go. I actually sometimes also, I got a little drizzle. Wild ball. Just a little bit. Okay. All right. So at this point, we're ready to throw this in the oven or the barbecue. And uh, I'll show you how I do that. So um, I'm just going to show you how I have my grill set up. So underneath here, that's where the old uh, barbecue grill grate used to be, which we don't really use this as a barbecue anymore. It's more of our oven. And I built this little grate here to go on top. 
You just set that on there like that, and it just keeps it elevated enough off the heat. And this is like a heat disbursement. We use that pan as a heat disbursement. You start it. There's no preheating needed. You just start on high, put all your burners to high. Okay. So we're just going to come back in seven minutes or so to check on it and see if we need to adjust the heat. So it's been about six minutes to show you what we're looking at. It's looking bubbly and nice already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it. Okay, just rotate it like that. And then what I'm going to do is also turn the two middle burners down to low. Keep the sirens on high, okay? So here I have some butter. I'm just going to cut the corner off. It's not too bad. And I'm just going to melt it. You'll see this is a very important step. Very, very important step here. Because we're going to use this once pizza comes out of the oven. Alright guys, so it's been about a, probably seven or eight more minutes. Let's give it a check. Very important to keep an eye on it. Very important to keep an eye on it because um, the back, or any barbecue is different, but the back heats up on mine a little bit more, so it's important to rotate. We're almost done. Let's say another five more minutes and we'll, we'll be good to go. All right, guys, so here's our finished product. I think it took about 20 minutes total um, playing playing with the heat. And every barbecue is different, so you're just going to have to really focus on watching. Um, the key things to look for when it's done is it should be nice and crispy. You know, the crust should be hard. Um, and the underneath should be hard as well. If you get a pan like this, you definitely um, be okay. So it's very important. The next steps. You can't miss these steps. Um, the crust needs a nice coating of that butter you melted. Okay, very important. This is how you get restaurant quality pizza at home, right here. Um, I actually was working with um, one of my workmates the other day, and I brought him some leftover pizza, and he goes, "Dude, did you make that pizza?" And I was like, "Yeah, that's just a normal night at the uh, at our house, you know." And he was like, "That's the best pizza I've ever had." Well, maybe you should start making homemade pizza. So, get that crust. It's gonna soak it up like a sponge, so just keep going around. Keep going around. All right, all right. All right. All right, maybe, maybe another round. I don't know. Who doesn't like butter? <laughs> all right, guys. So. I'm done with that, put that aside. And then we've got these, this kosher salt, flaky kosher salt, super good stuff. We just sprinkle that on the crust the whole way around. Just a little, you don't need to go nuts. But the butter helps that stick on. Okay. Side. And then I've got this garlic herb seasoning. That on just a little bit. Okay. And then the last thing is this Parmesan cheese. I'm just gonna grate some of that on there. And this just gives it like a nice extra cheesy kick, you know? Just give that a good grating. Don't miss these steps, I'm telling you. This makes the pizza here, it really does. If you just bring it in and start eating it the way it was, eh, that's a pizza. But this is a great pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be stingy. Okay. Mm. We're ready to go, I'll show you how I slice it up. So I've lifted the pizza up, and you can see all the steam that's generated there. Very important step, keeping this under your pizza the first uh, when you bring it in. Otherwise, you just get a soggy base, and nobody likes soggy. Nobody. Alright guys, so I've let this cool. I'd say for 
five minutes, maybe, okay? Now I'm just gonna slide it off, and this should come right up. This should be no hassle, okay? We've sprayed it. That literally, you can wipe it down and it's good to go. All right, so I'll show you how I slice this up. Pretty, pretty straightforward, normal pizza cutter. And I'm just gonna go across there, spin, across there, there, and there. Push down hard. You don't want to have to be raking through this thing, just wrecking your nice pizza. Push down nice and hard. You get nice cuts, and that, that's it. All right, so we're going to give this a taste test and um, see how it is. I'll grab a nice greasy one. I like grease. I don't know about you guys. And nothing like a nice greasy pizza, you know? See all the nice grease in there? Nice and firm, but... There's a heavy pepperoni there. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. Still a bit hot. Might want to cool down a little more than I did, but. Mmm. That is a very good pizza. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out our other videos. There's all kinds of stuff. We've got pepperoni, pepper. And, um, but leave some comments and let us know if you're going to try this. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. See you later.